Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Professor Hank, and today we're going to learn how to initialize structure variables in C++. Remember, when we talk about initialization, we're talking about defining and assigning at the same time. So we're creating a variable and we're assigning values to it at the same time time. To do this, we're going to make use of what's known as an initialization list. So we'll learn the syntax for initialization lists. We'll learn how to use them to assign values to our structure variables. And we'll also look at an optional way of using them that was introduced in C++ 11. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'll create a structure with a tag of player. And I'll add to this thing a few fields. One field will be a string, so I need to include the string header file. So we'll have the name of a player. You know, a player for like a football team or a hockey team or a soccer team or something like that. Um, we'll have their name. I'll include their age and we'll include a character for their position. How about that? Okay, so once we've got that thing declared, we can define a structure variable like this, right? So we can say player P. So that by itself is an uninitialized player variable, okay? There's no values that have been assigned to it. Now, you could assign values like this, right? You could say, let's set the name and let's set the uh, age and let's set the position okay and um you know that would get values into your player variable but that's not an initialization okay because this is two different steps this was defining and then this was assigning okay so what we have to do is we have to define and assign at the same time we have to define and assign at the same time time. So we're going to combine these steps by using an initialization list. Okay. Initialization. Defining and assigning at the same time. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to use this thing called an initialization list. So an initialization list is constructed by making a block of code basically. Right, so you have the opening and closing curly braces for each member. Then the structure, you place a value that you want to assign to that member, and it goes in order. So the first position within this list is going to be the name. Okay, so Hank will be assigned to the name member. And then the second one will be age. So the age will be assigned to, or 50 will be assigned to the age member and then position. So this last item in the list will be assigned to the last member of the structure. So it's, it's first position in the list goes into the first position of the, the first member of the structure, second position, second member, third position, third member. So then we can print out the contents of the structure. Okay, so see how that, see how p.h. And what we've done is we've defined and assigned at the same time. Okay, so let's test it just to make sure everything's working. Okay, so now you can see there's name age and position so okay so we can use a partially filled initialization list okay so we can do something like this and if we do that then what's going to happen is that the first member of the structure will be initialized with hank okay and i can then do only the first two okay and in that case 50 will go into the age member this is perfectly legal. What you can't do is skip positions, right? So something like this is illegal. So you see how the, the squiggle um, is occurring here or how it showed up. This is not legal syntax, okay? Now, what happens if I try to print out the contents 
of the structure variable, right? You'll see that Hank is there. You'll see that zero was assigned to the second member by default because it's an integer and zero actually was assigned to the third member of the structure variable as well because a character is actually a small integer. Now the thing is that zero is an ASCII code for a non-printable character. So that's why you didn't see anything for the third member. Finally, let's talk about an alternative way of doing the initialization that was introduced in C++ 11. So in C++ 11, when you're doing initialization with an initialization list, you don't have to include the equals, okay? So you can leave that out and it's gonna work exactly the same, All right? So let's go ahead and test that and see that. Okay, so either way is completely valid. Which way you should do it is purely up to you. Okay, so that's going to bring this video to a close. If you're a student of mine, you have questions about any of the topics that were covered in this video, feel free to drop me an email, stop by my office hours, or hit me up on Zoom online. For the rest of you, if you thought the video was useful, please consider giving a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, you got the thumbs down button as well. Consider supporting the channel in various ways. You can subscribe, you can join as a member with additional perks for as little as 99 cents. Leave a comment, whatever. But most of all, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.